So this started about five years ago for me when I was in a Pilates class one day, and the Pilates instructor <laughs> said that Pilates can lengthen the spine. And I knew at that instant she was just a little bit crazy. <laughs> And, um, and then, but I really started looking around some at structure and the nature of structure. So structure is something we start investigating at a very young age, and we keep playing with toys as we grow up, too. Structure, the structures we have that are man-made are based on stacking things on top of each other. And generally, the connectors have rigid connections within them. Um, if you look at the human body, you might think we have hinges inside of it. But if you look at the elbows and knees, they come together in a three-dimensional pattern, and they shift with each other. If a door hinge ever had the amount of slack or, or slop that we have in our elbows or knees, the door would never, ever move. There are also no levers inside of the human body. That's pretty amazing. There never is a place where two bones touch each other. The only place in our body where two bones touch is in our ears, and that's not structural at that point. So, um, so who can say Eureka in the audience? We have some bling for you. Real fast, real fast. <laughs> Couple toys to go out here. Okay. Thank you. So these are called floating compression structures. They were invented by Kenneth Snelson in the 1940s. And my only complaint about Snelson was he never said Eureka at the time, because this is probably something you've never heard of. Okay. This is the second way that we've ever learned how to create structure in our civilization. That's pretty cool. Bucky Fuller was there also in the 1940s. He called them tensional integrity models, and he smushed that together, and he called them tensegrity models. Body-mind workers have a very strong understanding of this, just, just the phrase tensional integrity. These things are springy. If you have one of these, smush it. Smush it in all directions. Show the people around you. Unlike a spring, they'll smush in any direction. So that's the kind of springiness these structures give us. You can see this in little children. And here's the secret. We're also just as springy as that. The difference between them and us is we stop playing to be springy in our lives. So you can go to the gym, train for aerobics, you can train for springiness too. The difference of, the different opposite side of springiness is sprinting. Sprinting is when we crank all of our tensions really, really high. Now sprinting's a fine thing to do too, but the, the trouble we get into is we get in a sprinter's posture and we stay there. These are wonderful models a guy out of Vancouver does. They show the long lines of tension in our bodies. And what that shows is if we have tension somewhere in our bodies, it can affect us somewhere else a long way away. Also, we have multiple layers of tension. So the deep layers are what give us flowing movement. And the superficials allow us, we move on top of those. And the trouble we get into, we hold our superficials rigid, and we don't let our deep muscles do our job. All of this is tied together with imagery. Our brain uses this, this massively parallel system. We have an image of how we should move. So the image of our room here, those are the examples we have. Also, imagery is pervasive in our language. If we have a bunch of building blocks, we want to see if they stack up. If we have an idea we're presenting, we want to nail that idea. And if we know something to be true, we know it in our bones. So, but floating imagery is a little more difficult to find. We'll find it in art, and we'll find it in nature. Martial arts masters have used animals for thousands of years for their examples. Water is a great example. Flowing, fluidity, that kind of thing. So body-mind disciplines bring all of this together. Talk about balance, tension in the body, relaxing the superficials, having this flowing kind of movement, and using imagery that supports all of this happening. You could think about body-mind disciplines as a foreign language, a very strange foreign language. And when you go to classes, you start to learn the language that's there. And you also see where you're, where you're not being that way. So we're about to do the world's simplest body-mind discipline. Please get ready. And I, a wonderful quote from the gentleman Thomas Myers. So body-mind disciplines are really about information. Everyone ready to go? Okay, great. So what would happen if you allowed the bones in your body to float right now? Okay, cool. So <laughs> talk with me afterwards about what you found there. So I'm on Twitter. I have launched today the Float Du Jour 
where we will talk about these things. And if you don't know what Twitter is, ask someone else. If you have any questions, please look me up. Thank you very much.